Hi there, everybody. This week, we're going to be working with um, regular old spreadsheet data, a regular table that doesn't have any spatial, uh, anything spatial about it, except for that there are columns in the attribute table that have coordinate values in them. So we've got the banding location, latitude and longitude, and we've got the recovery location, latitude and longitude. I want you to look at these values and everything that you know about coordinate systems so far, you should be able to determine if this is data that covers every, everywhere from Canada down to Mexico, um, what kind of coordinate system is this? Are these projected coordinates or uh, geographic coordinates? And that should be really obvious to you. And then you should automatically think, okay, I know what the units are on these um, because there's only really one logical choice. Okay, if you don't know the answer to those questions, or if those aren't automatic statements, that's fine. The information that you need is in um, this week's lab instructions and the lab instructions from last week and the things that you've learned in lecture. And definitely use us as re resources and ask. Okay, so here's our attribute table. Um, we've got um, different IDs for the birds, and then we've got the recovery location and the banding location. So this bird was banded in 1926 and was recovered a year later. It was banded in Saskatchewan up north and was recovered all the way down in Louisiana a year later. These are the coordinates that define those two locations. Um, and then there's more information about each bird. Okay, um, but notice nothing's displaying on the map because this is a standalone table there's nothing spatial about it. It just stores information. But you're going to take this data and create point files from it. Um, starting off with a little reminder from last week's work, um, the coordinate system of the map, remember the map display picks up the coordinate system from the first data set added. And because uh, when we build a new map in Arc Pro, it brings in a base map, the coordinate systems for the base maps are this WGS 1984 Web Mercator. Um, and hopefully you know from last week's work that this is the one that insults the senses when you're trying to make any kind of area or distance measurements. It's really great for maintaining north up, which is why it's used by Google and a bunch of other automated mapping programs, because no matter where you pan, north is always up. And if I zoom in, north is always up. And that's not true when we're working in other types of projections, but Mercator in particular maintains that direction. All right, so we are going to want to just be aware that um, we're not going to take our distance measurements in this coordinate system, and your job is going to be to change the coordinate system for the way the map displays so that you can make calculations um, for distances that these birds have traveled, preserving um, the metric of distance for measuring. Okay, let's go ahead and plot up, um, plot up a set of the data here, and I'm going to walk you through some of the nuances. So you right-click on the table itself and display XY data. Now you're going to do this twice from one table because we have a set of uh, coordinates for banding and a set of coordinates for recovery. So the first time, we're going to plot up the banded locations. Here's our input table, our output feature class. We can force this to go to our data. Um, mine is located on the desktop, and I've created a Northern Shoveler Outputs data set. So I'm going to single click on that, I think, and see if that works for us. Nope, it's asking for a name. OK, so I'm going to call this banded, because these are where the birds were banded. The um, X field is running along the horizontal axis, so that's the change in longitude, so banding longitude. And the Y field is the change north-south, so that's the banded latitude coordinates that we want to put in. There's no Z. You'll see that the coordinate system for these data sets is right in the instructions. This is the correct coordinate system. It has nothing to do with the way it's displaying. It's the way these coordinates were collected. So, Geographic coordinates, um, if we were working in ArcMap, we wouldn't be able to make distance measurements, but it doesn't matter what we want the data to ultimately be displayed in. What matters when we're plotting up the points is what coordinate system do these belong to. 
if we were to tell ArcGIS that these belong to a, pr a projection or a projected coordinate system that preserves distances, we would be telling Arc that the units on these are meters, and that would be super crazy. These would all plot up within 100 meters of the equator, and that's not right. So the units have to be degrees. You can see here that it plotted up using this very silly marker um, covering most of North America. So that's where they were banded. That's their, um, their winter location. Um, now, another trick I want to show you really quick is you can list by data source. And so that's showing us where each one of these data sets is located. And it's telling me that I can verify that this banded data set went to my users, Shannon Belmont, onto my desktop in my GIS folder, in my Northern Shoveler Outputs folder. And it's a file called banded. This is a really handy trick. Um, if you want to verify that all of your data is going into the folder, or if you're working on a, a USB drive and you need everything to be on the D drive, before you log off, just make sure you're going over to the list by source and you can check out the folder that each one of these things is located in. Um, you won't be able to reorganize your data. Notice it's giving me the no, you can't do that signal. That's because you're listing by source. If you go back to list by drawing order, then you can rearrange things again. Okay, it's still saying you can't. <laughs> That's fine. I should be able to put it there. Yeah. Okay, so now what you're going to do is go back to the same standalone table and display XY data again, but this time you're going to reference the recovery latitude and longitude and navigate to your output folder. and call this one recovered or something like that. I don't really care what you call them, but you should call it something so you can tell them apart. Um, and then just for a refresher, this time we're talking about the recovery longitude and the recovery latitude. Same coordinate system. Okay, now it's really not helpful that they're given the same symbology, so right away go in here and change these. Um, I would do something like that, change the properties to something much smaller because that's pretty obnoxious. And then we'll do the same thing with the recovery. It's being quite pokey. Whoops, you can't see that, but... Okay. And then we can change our base map if we want to. I tend to not like this one very much. Depends on what you're doing. Um, but let's try using that beautiful dark gray canvas. There we go. So banded and recovery data covering most of North America. And we're going to be making distance measurements. Um, all right, that's it.